It's time to pre-warn the neighbours again because this week it's the turn of the SIG MPX, a real head-turning replica of the SIG submachine gun. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Yes, today we have, by request, the SIG MPX. Not normally my type of gun, but what a real handful this is. Let's start with a brief history lesson then. The SIG MPX is a gas-operated automatic and or semi-automatic submachine gun designed and manufactured by Sig Sauer, designed originally to fire the 9x19mm Parabellum cartridge. It was designed in 2013 and was released to the general public in 2015. It features fully automatic for military and law enforcement and semi-automatic for the rest. Amazingly enough, it is classed as a short-barrelled rifle in a lot of states in America. The original had a rate of fire of around 850 rounds per minute and an effective range of around 3.5 kilometres. It could take 10, 20 or 30 round box magazines. Now, there are various versions of the MPX that have been made and it is not a folding stock in this air gun version because it houses the 88 gram CO2 cartridge in the stock which is good for loads and loads of shots but of course it is a more expensive way of having your gas. This also then adds to the realism as far as the weight is concerned because this weighs in at 3.34 kilograms which is heavier than the original, which was around 2.7 kilograms. At 650 millimetres, this is also slightly longer than the original, which was a shorter 610 millimetres fully extended. Let's take a look at it then, shall we? As already stated, it certainly looks the part. Starting from the front, it has the end of the barrel slightly protruding from the vented type front which is adorned with rails for all manner of toys. On top is a metal non-adjustable front sight on the rail which basically goes the whole length of the gun right back to the fake cocking mechanism. It also carries the rear flip-up sight which has an adjustment wheel for windage and a choice of flip sights. Both the front and rear sights are removable. Now I fitted a red dot to this briefly and I must admit it was easier and better to use in my opinion and adds to that more modern military feel. That front part we've already spoken about is plastic but the main body is metal as is the cocking lever. The main body mimics the original with mag release catch, shell ejection port cover and safety which incidentally is a very sure-footed click between safe and semi-automatic and is dual sided with red dot for fire. The rear of the gun has the plastic butt pad and 88 gram cover and is a simple release by pressing one button on the side. The grip is a pistol grip style and is all plastic. The trigger is made of metal and has a pull weight of about four pounds. The dropout magazine is plastic and hides an interesting system of belt fed pellets. 30 in total, yes, pellets, not BBs, which should help reduce ricocheting and hopefully improve accuracy. But we'll find that out later. 
Loading the belt style magazine is quite a time consuming exercise and is best done by firstly removing the mag, then opening the side door on the magazine itself. Remove the belt, then individually load each pellet into the belt. Once you've loaded all 30, then carefully feed the belt back into the magazine, making sure you've got it the right way round, until the whole thing fits snugly in. Now it is surprisingly snug once in place, and during my time with this gun, which incidentally has seen some action in its life, didn't slip or miss a beat once. Now once loaded, close the door back up, slot back into the gun, being a little bit more careful with this because it's plastic and not metal. You've then got a massive 30 rounds of fun as reward for all the time it's just taken you to load it all up. But be careful because it does eat through those 30 pellets very, very quickly. And it's not long before you're back to the loading process once more. What about power then? Because we've already established it looks the part and feels the part. Well, this time I used 8.44 grain JSBs and over the chrono it saw a maximum of 379 feet per second which equates to 2.69 foot pounds or 3.65 joules which is not as powerful as I was hoping for or possibly expected. Maybe it's just that this gun feels as though it should be more powerful with its weighty presence. Still, I wouldn't take this out hunting even if it had the power because you're likely to be taken away very quickly with the blues and twos going. So, let's have a look at the target work then. Is it powerful enough to be accurate? Considering it's firing pellets as well, it should, fingers crossed, be accurate. Let's take a look. Well the first thing we can establish is the red dot hadn't been zeroed in properly, but it's the grouping we're more interested in. And overall it wasn't too bad. Again I would have liked it to have been a little tighter and I think with practice it is capable of much better. The problem is always time. I get a gun and never enough time to dedicate to getting the most accurate results from it. And I always film the first attempt, which avoids me compensating for any issues a gun may have, which is at least consistent. But it is clearly accurate enough for some plinking fun out in the back garden. This really is a fun gun. It feels great to hold and shoot. The temptation is to just keep pulling that trigger as fast as possible rather than concentrate on accuracy. You could do some real destruction work on some tin cans out in the back garden with this and you'd finish up with a huge grin on your face. I purposely didn't put a scope on this because to me it isn't about ultimate accuracy. It's about quick up and shoot and fun. When anybody requests us to review a gun, we do try to oblige. And in this case, I'm so glad we did. It's been a real blast using this. Just the thing to have with you for the next zombie apocalypse. Thanks for asking for this one. And as always, thanks for watching.